In the previous part of this tutorial, I showed how to create the Vivado project for this PS GPIO example. I created the bit file and the HWH that I will now use on my board to show how to use the pink GPIO class. I'll start by copying the files to my board. Notice I am logged into Jupyter Lab. Jupyter Notebook is also available with pink, but Jupyter Lab has some more advanced features. One example of this is that I can drag and drop files to upload them to my board. I'll go ahead and create a new notebook in the same directory. I'll add a markdown heading. I really should add some better descriptions describing what I'm doing, but to keep the tutorial short, I'll leave that for later. And I'll make this completed notebook available with the other tutorial files. The first thing I need to do is configure the programmable logic with my design. My design isn't really an overlay at this point, but I can use the pink overlay class to prototype my design and build up the software or the notebook that will turn a hardware design into an overlay. I'll import the overlay class and instantiate my overlay. Notice I can use a relative path for my bitstream to pick the file in this directory. When I run this code, the overlay object OL is created. I mentioned in the previous tutorial that the PS, the processing system, is configured at boot time by the pink image. Most of the PS settings we selected in Vivado for this design would not be applied. However, there are some settings that can be configured at runtime when the overlay is instantiated. We look into this in more detail in later tutorials, as this design is a little bit too simple to demonstrate some of these capabilities. By default, instantiating the overlay will also download the bitstream to the programmable logic. Next, I import the GPIO class and create GPIO objects for my input and output bits. I can run help on this module. The PS GPIO use a Linux kernel module to control the GPIO. This means that the operating system assigns an index to each GPIO. The Linux index must be mapped to the Python GPIO instance. The get underscore GPIO underscore pin function, which is part of the pink GPIO class, is used to map the PS pin number to the Linux index. Let's try this. You can see the pin number or index returned from Linux for GPIO 0 in my case is 960. I don't want to hard code this value, so I'll use this function when creating each of my GPIO objects, and I'll specify if each pin is an input, an output, or an in-out. I'll create the objects for all of my outputs first, and then I'll do the same thing for the inputs. If you watched the previous tutorial on building the hardware, you will have seen that in my design, the outputs are connected to the Zinc PS GPIO 0 to 14, and the inputs are connected from 15 to 22. Now my objects are created, I can write some values to my outputs and read back from the inputs to test my design, each of the logic gates that I have. GPIO have read and write functions, so let's go ahead and test the AND gate. I'll check the output first. The inputs should be zero by default, so an output of zero is expected. If I set one of the inputs to one, the output should still be zero. If I set the other one, now the AND gate gives me a one, and if I write it back to zero, it changes to zero again. I can do the same for the NOT gate. This time the input to the gate is zero, so the output from the gate is one initially. For the OR gate, either input to the gate will cause the output to go high. And we can test the XOR gate in the same way, but let me do something slightly different and print out a truth table for this gate. You can see I can build up the Python code in this way and quickly build a truth table. The 4-bit AND gate is next. Let me collect the operand bits and the result bits into lists. I'll add two more lists that I will use as the input data to the AND gate. Data zero will be written to one input and data one to the other. I can write data and I can write back the result.
Let me gather all this code into one cell to write the input data to the gate, read back and print the results. I can now play around with the data values to test this gate. This concludes the PSGPIO tutorial. In summary, PSGPIO are wires between the Zinc processing system and the programmable logic. They give us a very simple way of controlling and reading back data from the programmable logic. PSGPIO, PSGPIO are just wires, so we will usually only use them for simple control and status. For reading and writing registers or sending and receiving large amounts of data between the PS and the PL, we will use Axi GPIO, memory mapped IO, and DMAs. Pink has Python classes to support these operations, and you will see how to use each of these in the next tutorials.